Yo, 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 what's going on, world? What's up, family? I hope everybody's doing well. Thank you for tuning in. Real TV. Savannah, Georgia, what's up? Johannesburg, how you doing? Denver, Colorado. Beijing, Hong Kong. How are y'all? New York, what's up? LA, what's up? St. Louis, what's up? Atlanta, what's up? And to the many others who are tuning in. But for those cities in particular, thank you. Thank you. So, tonight's show is called... Hmm. You know, I'm not too sure of the title yet, but I'll figure it out throughout the show. Figure it out. What I want to talk about is the upcoming celebration of Easter. Now, I did a previous show that you could tune into that talks about the Easter deception that they basically don't want us to know about. But um, the thing about it is, is that for those who don't know, for those who may need a refresh, for those who care less to know, Easter is a pagan holiday. It derives from other terms that go along with the pagan goddess Ishtar, Astarte, or Isis, or Ceramicis, to name a few. What we really should be doing is celebrating Passover. Keep in mind that the word Easter is only in the biblical text and mentioned one time in the book of Acts. I want to say it's Acts chapter 12 and 4, 12, 12 verse 4. It's only mentioned one time and it's completely off the beaten path of what's in context. What we really should be doing is getting rid of all unleavened bread. I mean, get, getting ah, pardon, getting rid of all leavened bread. That is, that means yeast. So everything that is yeast in your house, everything, that bread, donut, biscuits, the yeast itself, anything and everything that has yeast in it. There's a certain day that we're supposed to get rid of it all. We're supposed to get an unblemished lamb, but for the most part, I know that we all don't have access to a local farm where we can get an unblemished male lamb or goat to cook, so we got to do the best that we can and go to the local market and get some lamb and cook it on the open fire, roast it, cook it on the fire. We're not supposed to eat it raw or sudden. Sudden means like sodden or soaked in a a type of liquid. So you're not supposed to stew it. You're not supposed to boil it. You're not supposed to cook it on on an electric stove. So if you have an electric stove at home, no, 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 no. You need to throw that thing on the grill. If you got a gas stove, okay, you 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 could get away with that. But for the most part, you're supposed to cook it over over fire and have with unleavened bread. You have it with bread without yeast, so like a type of cracker or whatever. Uh, Me personally, I may do a, a, you know, a uh, some matzo or um, I'm not sure what type of crackers, but maybe have some grape juice on the side with it, you know, cook it up, season it up. See, God, or the proper name, Yah, but for those who like to call him God, I mean, that's that's you. This is, I mean, I have nothing against you on that. You just, um, it's just the proper name is Yah, hence the phrase Kumbaya, Hallelujah. Um, the original name in Hebrew um, is derived with the Y. 
The letter J wasn't created until the year 1611. In the Hebrew language, there isn't a letter J. But um, maybe we'll get into that in the latter episode. But um, yeah, we cook it up with bitter herbs and, uh, you know, maybe a little salt, pinch of salt or so, however. But uh, definitely bitter herbs is the recipe. See, y'all got that recipe, you know? <laughs> we think that when this life is over, we're going to be on a place that the cartoons uh, promote on these uh, clouds. And it's like, oh, like just boring. It says no man, the ears, no man has has seen or has heard what is in store for him that he that loves the most high. No man, no eyes have seen, no eyes have heard. So, I mean, it's beyond our wildest imagination. Didn't Lazarus lift his eyes up in hell and then ask for a drop of water? That itself lets you know that we do have a body, that Lazarus did have a mind to think. You know, he had taste buds, obviously, because he asked for a drop of water to cool his tongue. You know, I mean, the list goes on. Um... Just want to encourage you with some good words. Again, if this is your first time, I would like to welcome you. I'm not a preacher. I am not a prophet. I am not a bishop. I am not an apostle. I'm just a regular person like you who happened to come across the truth. And because of this truth, I like to share this truth. There's only one truth. That's all. There's just many truths. That's all. But um, the slogan is, silence is betrayal. If you know the truth and say the truth, then the blood, if you know the truth and don't say the truth, then the blood is on your hands. So I pass this baton to you to spread the word of truth, whatever it is, whatever it is. If we know that a bridge is broken down, that it just broke off and we're on that bridge and we happen to turn back. And as we turn back, we see other cards going towards the end of that bridge. We're responsible for telling those people about the end of that bridge. And you know, speaking of, and we're going to take a short break. Speaking of bridges, of or warning, if you will, um, Dallas, I want to commend you for holding on for those who went through the issues of that alarm sound. In Dallas, Texas, yesterday... There was a hacking into the electronic system of the severe weather alert. The alarms were triggered and went off. There are about 1,400 alarms that went off from the period of 11.30 p.m. to 3.30 a.m. Someone hacked into the system and cut on the weather alarms. And they were going on different intervals every 15 to 30, 40 seconds or so throughout the entire night from 11, 11-ish to about 3-ish in the morning, 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. So you can only imagine what that city was feeling after, you know, Trump pulled the trigger on Syria, the missiles there. And I know this show, we jump from topic to topic, but that's what we do here. This is not your ordinary radio station. We keep it real. It's real TV. It's like a dialogue with you and I, one-on-one. So, Dallas, I commend you for hanging on on in there. And for the little babies, I hope their ears wasn't, nothing happened with their their sense of sound. And the puppies, oh, you know those dogs are just wailing, even if they hear ambulance. Go cross or a fire truck go cross. I can only imagine all the dogs that were howling and all the people that thought that some major crisis was going on. Wow. But just consider it a sign. Though the other cities didn't have it, we all must keep in mind that one day that real alarm will sound. That real trumpet will sound. And the entire world will hear it. And by then... It may just be too late. But in the meanwhile, I have a song I would like to share with you called Slow Dance. This is something that I made for my lady. But in retrospect to our upcoming Passover event, maybe this is something that you and your 
loved one can share with one another and maybe dance to over that nice lamb meal with unleavened bread, you know, with good people. This song is from an album that I recorded in March, March 1st to be exact, of this year called Freestyle the Album. In essence, to give a quick synopsis, I received some beats from my great friend, my great longtime friend. And some of the beats I initially asked to have for this radio podcast. And lo and behold, he went over the top and sent me several, several incredible instrumentals. And after listening to each one, I started to record a melody. Back in the day, I used to do music in a whole different light, in a whole different style. But this time, I changed it up um, after coming to the truth. So they say when his heart felt... No, no, no. What's it? They say when it comes from the heart, it's heartfelt. So I didn't write any material to this song or from any of the songs on Freestyle, the album, part one. Also, Freestyle, the album, part two, was just released in early April. These songs are not for sale. They're not to become famous or some YouTube sensation. It's just my own personal creation that I would like to share with you in this radio podcast. This song is called Freestyle. Sorry, (laughs) I am talking way too fast and thinking way too slow. (laughs) This song is called Slow Dance from the album Freestyle the Album. Raw and uncut, made the entire album in 25 minutes. So if you hear any mess ups or anything, I did all of this on one take. So disregard, but most importantly, please enjoy. I just want to talk to you for a little bit. I got to talk to you for a little bit. I see you when you're all red dressed, looking like a wine punch. My gosh, would love to take you out to lunch. Bow tie, black shoes, me and you. And you know I gotta wear tux. You deserve the finer things in life. Diamond rings and anything you need. Diamond rings and everything you need. And I love to listen. I don't wanna talk about your beauty. I just wanna talk about the way. That you are as a human being Cause the way you make me feel, babe I can't explain, so I had to get a track I had to call my homeboy up to make a track Just to tell you how I feel on this track And I'm hoping that you know, hope you understand That I wanna have this dance with you tonight, baby So let's slow dance, slow dance tonight, baby Yeah And I love the way your smile is and I love the way our time is When we spend quality time together And we holding hands in the city And I remember our first trip to New York And I really wanna wanna I, I, <laughs> I tripped up on that part But I'm glad you got my heart I'm glad that I met you I know I can't sing But I need to let you know that I so glad, so glad to have this dance with you, to have this dance with you is so special. Let's slow dance, slow dance, slow dance. Let's slow dance, slow dance, slow dance. I know I can't say, babe, <laughs> but I hope you like the melody. I hope you like the melody. If I hit the studio, I'ma make you one I'd make you a whole album If I had the money and the time to do it Do it on one take We can go somewhere on spring break Maybe Cancun, had the money, hit the moon If I had the moon, I mean If I had the moon, I'd probably give you cheese And if I had the hair store, I'd give you weave And if I was a drug man, I'd give you weed But I ain't that <laughs> I ain't that And I don't smoke You know that I'm being real Cause I ain't joking 
I ain't joking, baby. I ain't joking. I'm just glad to have the soul days. I'm just glad to have the soul days. I'm just glad to have the soul days. And I'm glad to be your man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking in your pretty eyes. Jamie Foxx, where you at? Jamie Foxx just sang the hook. Okay, guys, that was number five, Slow Dance, from the album, Freestyle the Album. Thank you for uh, listening. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, my <laughs> No, you... you... Thank you, thank you. No, 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 thank you, thank you. You all are far too kind. Thank you. All right, so moving right along. I decided to come up with the title for the show. The title of the show tonight is Where's the Church? Where's the church? The church is not a building. There's a scripture that says that God dwells not in the buildings of man's hands, but he would rather dwell in the hearts of those. In the hearts of those, he says that earth is my footstool. He says, I have built the heavens and the earth. What can man build me? So what better place for God to be in our body itself? So with that being said, we are the church. But we or one would go to church to show the outward work, to show the outward work of the work of the internal spirit, meaning clapping of the hands, stomping of the feet playing the drum or any brass instrument to give homage to the Most High. So that's the main reason of going to a church that is a building. But we are the church. We are the building. See, when Christ was alive, he spoke on the hills. He spoke on the, I mean, he probably preached on the boat, you know, etc. They didn't just have no building. If it was, somebody please tell me where it was. Now, there was an instance where Christ was upset and he actually was passing through a synagogue and he went through with the whip, flipping tables up, upside down and everything because the people um, were selling goods at the synagogue, if you will, at the church. And he said that my uh, house, my father's house is not a den of thieves. You have made my father's house a den of thieves or something along the lines of that. So, With that being said, did you all know that there is this crazy location in Buffalo, New York called True Bethel Baptist Church or True Bethel Baptist Church? (laughs) This is crazy. This is crazy. You're not going to believe this. And if you live in Buffalo, I'm sure you know what's going on. But this place in Buffalo, New York, True Bethel Baptist Church was opened in 2004. And they have a subway on the side of the church. Did you just... I don't know if you heard me. They have a... They have a subway... No, 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 no. Wait, wait. I don't think you heard me. True Bethel Baptist Church in New York, in Buffalo, New York, has a subway on the side of their church. A subway on the side of their church. The subway on the side of their church. That's crazy. That That's the same thing as the one in the olden times. I mean, just think. They get the bread in bulk. They get their meat a certain price, and they charge a certain price. They overcharge. And it's a, I, I'm not even going to get into it. It's just not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be. All right? But, um, I mean, we are the church. Churches, for the most part, are part of a, what you call a 501c3. And what 501c3 organizations is basically a nonprofit organization that works with the government. It falls under this category um, with other, other groups like uh, that, that would do any charities or any educational work or scientific work or literary work things like that. 
But with this act, these 501c3s get tax write-offs. So the money is 100% theirs. With that being said, if these churches, which they are, 80 to 90%, I'll say, if not all of them, but I, I can't verify the information, but I do know that most of them are part of 5013 seeds. With this connection, not only does it allow them to get 100% of the proceeds, but they have to work with the government. They have to do their to-do list. They have to do their checkoff list. They can't talk about certain things. They have to preach about certain doctrines. They have to leave certain uh, scriptures out. You know what I mean? They have to preach a certain way. You know what I mean? They have a guest book for a purpose. Have you ever went into a church and they write your name down in a guest book? Well, that, that's just merely a head count. It's not to follow up with you and to really see how you're sincerely doing. And, it, well, in an aspect, maybe it could. Maybe I'm not saying that all church members are not genuine. And some people are a part of these facilities and don't know what's going on. But for the most part, if they are making calls, it's because they need you to come back and pay your tithes and offering. Did you know that you're not supposed to give no no church, no tithe and offering? We, the people of the church, you're supposed to give your tithe and offering to the poor. That's where it goes, but maybe I'll do a show on that one day. But this, this episode is about where's the church. We are the church. You are the church. When we're in good spirits, we are the church. It says your body is your temple. Where's your temple? A temple is another... Another word for a synagogue, another word for a church. We have to keep it clean. We have to do upkeep it. We have to do upkeeping for the inside and outside, you know. And sometimes we as individuals can be used as instruments. We can be used as instruments to do the work of the Most High, you know. So that's that's how that works. And, you know, again, again. The true celebration is not Easter. It's paganistic. So don't be dying no eggs. Don't die no eggs. Don't ball no eggs. Don't scrap. You know, it's okay to eat eggs. I'm not I'm not bashing that part. And <laughs> ball and scramble and sunny side up, etc. Now speaking of sunny side up, again, I know we run from topic to topic, but speaking of sunny side up eggs, for those who eat sunny side up eggs, just stop. You got to slow down on that. For one, it says that we're not supposed to consume blood. We're not supposed to consume any blood. Sunny side up eggs, though they're cooked slightly, it still contains uncooked yolk. Uncooked yolk has cells. There are cells that we cannot see by the naked eye. So you're literally eating blood in a sense or portion of it. So you got to cook that thing. And common sense tells you that a salmonella or E. coli outbreak could happen at any time. We have to be wise as serpents, harmless as dove. That's the thing. And that's not very wise to eat sunny side up egg. Just go ahead and just make it over medium. I mean, not over medium, over hard. Scramble it, omelet, omelet it, <laughs> you know. But um, do some research. Go to Google, maybe check out some YouTube videos, check out some other videos about the truth about Easter or a paganistic holiday. It is not what you think it's supposed to be. It is not. These Easter speeches are just another word for Estarte speeches, Istar speeches, speeches. Don't go letting your kids, if you have children, uh, I need to say the word children, not kids, because kid is the... the uh, the term for baby goats or young goats. So we don't have goats. We have children if you have children. So pardon me. I've, I know I probably said it plenty of other times. I'm still working on it. I ain't perfect. But anyways, if you have children, don't let them go Easter egg hunting. Don't. Don't. And don't bake any cakes and muffins that has yeast in it. You're not supposed to eat anything with yeast. Read Exodus chapter 12. Go get you some lamb. You don't have to get you a whole lamb if you can't afford it. Go get you some uh, 
like the uh, the loins or get you some of the breast or some of the shanks of the lamb. If you can afford it, get you some of the rib or some of the leg. Get the whole thing if you can. But just get you some lamb. Cook it on a grill with some bitter herbs, a little salt, maybe a little cracked pepper. That's it. Bitter herbs. And get you some crackers and eat it with that. And read Exodus chapter 12. Read it. We celebrate it because we were brought out of Egypt when we were let from Pharaoh. Remember the story when Moses, we got a call. Baby got, I'm, I'm doing a show right now if it's for me, I'll. Well, um, okay, we're back. See, this is real TV. We keep it real here. <laughs> okay, so where was I? Um, I want to say lamb and bread. Okay, get you some, uh, get you some unleavened bread, and you know, go to also read Exodus uh, ten and eleven. 10 and 11 talks about the situation that we were in. And this Passover is not only the celebration of the Christ, the Most High, um, Yahweh, but it is also the celebration of the Hebrew, the true Hebrew Jews that were delivered from Pharaoh. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a short sh show tonight. It is called, Where is the Church? No. And keep in mind that you are the church. We just got to do better to try to do better. That's all. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. And uh, judge not, for you should be judged the same, in the same way. But, um, yeah, I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. And, and more shows should be coming soon. I've been a I've been a little busy, but I'm trying to stay up to beat. So pardon any delays. And again, thank you for tuning in. Real tea.